Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Fly Fish Dan. Today we're back at the Puget Sound Fly Company. We're going to talk to Anil about waders and why you might want to invest in a better pair of waders. So we're going to go over four different types of waders, talk about price points and the benefits of each. So let's get inside and talk waders. All right, let's do this. Fish on. Before we go into the Puget Sound Fly Company, I'm hoping that you'll do me a solid. What I need you to do is to hit the thumbs up button for me, consider making a comment, and if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing. This channel is full of positive energy, great fly fishing content, a lot of how-tos, and just me really sharing my passion for the sport. Why is it important to interact with me on YouTube? Because it helps with my discoverability, and the bigger I can grow, the more cool things like this that I can do. And I am really looking forward to continuing this channel and continuing to grow. So thank you for that. I really do appreciate it. All right, with that being said, let's get inside and talk to Anil. All right, let's go do this. Fish on. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in and welcome to another episode of Fly Fish Dan. Today, we're back at the Puget Sound Fly Company talking with Anil. And today, we're going to talk about all-in accessories, right? This is when you've got the setup, you're into fly fishing, and now you want to level up when it comes to gear, whether it's waders, jackets, flotation devices, we're gonna talk about, and price is not an option, right? So we're gonna talk about some of the best gear available to you for your fly fishing needs. So let's start talking about some, uh, we're gonna start with waders, Anil? Yeah, sure. Perfect, we'll talk, start talking waders. All right, let's do this. All right, let's talk about waders. So Anil, I want the best pair of waders out there, period, right? Let's just, let's say I've been using uh, Hodgman, I wanna level up, Yeah, right? Sure. Let's talk about waders. Without really, getting too into brand uh, my favorite are sims in patagonia and you know you really do get what you pay for uh again there's value everywhere and there's some 300 dollars waders that are vastly better than others but and the same thing is true at 600 dollars and so on but by the time they come to us it's exactly where you're talking about they've had hodgman they've had other stuff and they're tired of it leaking. I mean, we live in Washington State. Right. My joke, you know, you only need these 10 and a half months out of the year. Right. So staying warm and dry is something that people generally are kind of like, how much, you know, they want to save their money. They're practical, reasonable people, but they're like, I'm tired of spending $200 and getting wet three months later. If I have to spend 400 or 500 or whatever, I want to be warm and dry so that I don't quit early and I can get the most out of my day. Um, Sims G3s are hands down our most popular waders, probably the most popular premium waders in the country. Made out of Gore-Tex, sorry, Gore-Tex, right in Bozeman, Montana. Um, great waders, ridiculously reliable, comfortable. And I, I have that, I have a similar, I have the G4. Yep. Just, just upgraded myself because I was tired of the leaking, even though, you know, I've had some, I had frog togs, I think it was the last one, and it lasted a couple years, but then they started leaking around the knee, so I just thought, you know what, I'm just gonna spend the money because I think it's worth it in the end. For sure, and the G4 is a very similar wader, yeah, almost the same design, just a even better quality materials. It's funny to say that because arguably these are the best materials you can get in a wader that isn't Sims, so you know, arguably the only material that's better is also a Sims waiter. Uh, Patagonia obviously needs no introduction, makes exceptional outdoor gear. Their waders are also extremely well built. Obviously I have a little bit of a preference, but I'm currently wearing a pair of these and they're spectacular. One of the interesting things about these is they have knee pads. Mm -hmm. um, when I got mine, I immediately planned to remove them. It's easily done never bothered to do it and i'll have to say i actually enjoy them even though i kind of thought they were ridiculous i don't sit on my hands and knees to catch fish on any kind of regular basis but it's been nice when i'm kneeling down to land a fish and doing things like that so yeah something i didn't even consider no again i sort of poo pooed it right when i saw it there's you definitely get good features when you spend more on a waiter obviously the zipper is huge what is the benefit of that a lot of people find it easier to get in and out, but the main benefit is you do not have to remove your raincoat to go pee when you're a man. Oh, there you go. And I didn't even again, consider that. You only have to wear your raincoat 10 and a half months out of the year, <laughs> so it's not that big a deal. Um, but that's primarily what it is. If you think about removing your waders, typically, 
once you've unbuckled them and pulled them down, you now have to remove your coat to get them back on. So even if you didn't right away, at some point, and if you're standing on a gravel bar, we've all been there, you're walking around looking for a place to put your rain jacket that isn't yep. right on the ground. So very, very convenient, obviously not necessary. And one of the things that people always ask is, you know, they see a zipper and go, it's gonna leak. Gonna leak, there. right. We are super late to this. This is from dry suits. So if you can imagine if people go literally over a hundred feet underwater in this, it's probably okay in your waders where you're unlikely to hit it at any point anyway. Yeah. It's right at the waist. So it's not even something that's in the water very often. But having said that, um, like any mechanical device, it can fail, but they're extremely reliable. Right. Give us price points again. The G3s run around. We start in the summer, we'll have a less expensive wader too, but we do, this is about three and a quarter. Okay. And this is really a knockoff G3 wader, knocked off by Sims. Everybody's done it. I think they just decided, hey, we could do that better than anybody. <laughs> right. This is the G3, it's 550. This is the new tactical wader. It's a very nice wader, but a little bit more specialized, a little bit lighter weight, very cool. 550 as well, and then 750. Okay, great. Well, no, thanks again for the great information. I mean, that, that really was informative. Well, thanks a lot. I appreciate your time today and uh, talking with us. And uh, yeah, until the, uh, and come and see Anil at the Puget Sound Fly Company. They're in Tacoma, Washington, and uh, he'll help you get set up. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for tuning in and fish on.